What we're going to look at now then is great circle distances. OK, so a great circle distance is the shortest distance between two points on the surface of the globe and it forms a curve across the Earth. So if we were going from 4950 North 515 West to 3229 North 64 West, we were a little less north and a little more west. So position A is going to be over there and we do a great circle like that down to position B, which was more west and less north than position A. At the top of that, we then have the pole with angle P. We have angle little a for our initial course and angle little b for our final course. If there's one letter, it's an angle. If we have two letters, it forms a side. So there's the pole at the top. Therefore, we have PA. We have PB. And we have AB. If there are two letters in it, it is always a distance. It will come out in degrees and then we can multiply it by 60 to get a distance. OK, one letter will always be an angle. So angle A will be our initial course. Angle B will be our final course as the vessels coming in. And angle P will be the angle at the pole between the two meridians. This is the meridian of five degrees 15 west that position A was on. This is the meridian of 64 west that position B was on. So this angle here, if we were looking down on the top of the globe, is the angle between the two meridians, which we will also class as D long. OK, so PA, PB and AB also have, if you like, a name. PA is the colat of A. What that means is it's 90 degrees minus something. So that's what we mean by call out of A, call out of B, call out of V, call out of X, whatever we're talking about. The complement of it is 90 degrees minus. So it's 90 degrees minus the lat of A gives us PA there. Okay. So we knew latitude of A was 4950 north. So PA equals 90 degrees minus the lat of A, which is going to be 90 degrees minus 49 degrees 50 minutes. I'm going to write north. You don't have to name it north, but it stops you making any issues going forward. And then what we're going to do once we've done that on our calculator. And we get the answer, we're going to store it as A in our calculator memories. That just means now we only have to press recall A on our calculator, not type the whole number in, not risk making any typos. So PB is the call out of B, which equals 90 degrees minus the latitude of B. That's the of A. So it's going to be 90 degrees minus, and again, 32 degrees 29 minutes north. I'm writing north again just to remind myself as a little hint, because if one of these was south and we use the north port, we would have to minus the northern one but then add the southern one. OK, once I get that number, I'm going to save that as B. Okay. So A, I got 48 degrees 10, sorry, 40 degrees 10. So I'm going to save that as A. B, I've got 90 degrees minus 32 degrees 29 minutes, gives me 57 degrees 31 minutes. And I've saved that as B, shift, store, B on my calculator. If you've got one of those new Casio Classwiz carbon fiber ones, then you just press store A or store B. You don't have to do the shift, it's inverted. Now, AB is the distance of the great circle. Okay. That's usually what we're asked to find. Calculate the great circle initial course, calculate great circle distance, or something like that. So we need to find AB. Okay. The way to find AB is to use your formula sheet. You'll see on your formula sheet, there's a formula there. Cos AB equals cos P times sine PA times sine PB plus cos PA 
times cos PB. Now, with that in mind, we said AB was the distance. I want to find that. So what I'm going to do is find the other parts of that formula I need in order to find that distance. The final part is P. Because I've got PA and I've got PB, now I need to find P. P is the D long, which was the difference between 64 west. That's the difference sign, not necessarily the minus, and 515 west. So I've got to do the difference between them which was 64 degrees minus 5 degrees 15 minutes in this case, because they're both west. We subtract because we're looking for the difference of longitude, and that gives us 58 degrees 45 minutes. And we name this one in our direction of travel. So I'm going from point A to point B, so I'm going to call that west. And again, I'm going to save that as C in my calculator memory. For the simple reason that we've got A and B, now we've got C, and C sounds a little bit like P, and that's about the best I can get here. Okay. Now, the formula then is quite simple. We've already been told what the formula is. It's on the formula sheet, we just write it out. Cos AB equals cos P times sine PA times sine PB, and that's all in brackets, plus cos PA times cos PB. So cos AB equals cos 58 degrees 45 minutes times sine 40 degrees 10 minutes, times sine 57 degrees 31 minutes plus cos 40 degrees 10 minutes times cos 57 degrees 31 minutes. Now we've already got our calculator memories for this one so we can just say cos we call C, sine we call A, times sine we call B plus cos we call A, cos we call B. That saves us having to type all that number into our calculator and risk making a typo with it. Okay. I also like it because it says kebab and as you can probably tell, I'm a bit of a fat kid. So, when we do that in our calculator, cos we call C, times sine we call A, times sine we call B, close brackets, plus open brackets, cos we call A, times cos we call B, equals so cos AB equals and when we do that one it comes out nicely as 0 0.6926657 now, we then press shift cos to the minus one, which tells us that AB equals 46 degrees, 0 09 minutes, and then it's 30.61 seconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to round to one decimal place and call that 0.5. Okay. We always do distance to one decimal place. So then we times that by 60 to get the distance, which is times 60. So we say times it by 60 equals the distance, which was 2769.5 miles. Now what we do is we say, 46 degrees 09.5 and we're not doing the 30.61 we're doing 0.5 and we save that 
as D on our calculator memories. Can we save it to this level of accuracy of the 0.9.5? We save that as D on our calculators to that level. Okay. And there we have it, a great circle distance. The only difference would be if we were crossing the equator, we'd still do it from the same pole. So this one would have been, say PA was 49.50 north still, we do 90 minus that. Assume B was 32.29 south, we would have had to have gone 90 degrees down to the equator and then another 32.29. So if it was crossing the equator, it would have been 90 plus for the one in the Southern Hemisphere and 90 minus for the one in the Northern Hemisphere. Whichever one you've done minus from, that's your elevated pole. So 90 degrees minus 49.50 north, 90 degrees plus 32.29. I've obviously used the North Pole as my elevated pole, and that would be the one that I would have to have going forward for all my calculations. Okay. So we always draw a sketch to keep it relevant in our heads. Draw it out with sort of not to scale, but comparatively. So A was more north and more west than B. So draw it like that. Write out what your PA was, what your PB was, and what your P was. Write out the formula and populate it. The SQA require you to show all intermediate steps. And then put the numbers in, populate it. Get your cos AB, get your AB, times it by 60, that gives you the distance, and we save the 4609.5 in this case, the AB, to memory D in our calculator. Okay. Once we've done that, that's our great circle distance that we've done there.